Hola, hello, welcome. Today uh, we're exploring how to heal the inner child through shadow work. So many of us carry childhood wounds uh, which impact our adult lives. And these can be addressed one way through shadow work which can be really, really incredibly transformative. There are many other ways, but just for this video, we're gonna sort of focus on shadow work. The inner child represents the child that we once were. Uh, it holds our unmet needs, suppressed emotions, and memories of past trauma. So childhood trauma um, can manifest itself in various ways, such as difficulty in trusting others, having low self-esteem, or repeating unhealthy relationship patterns, these wounds often stem from unmet childhood needs, neglect or abuse. And like a lot of things, and I've done a video on this some time ago, I'll see if I can put it up here. It's not always what happened to us, which is what we chase in adulthood. Often it's what uh, we didn't get is what we chase. Um, and what tends to happen is, let's say for instance, we'll go to an extreme. So there's extreme neglect or abuse. The child, when you were that age, kind of has this kind of uh, arrested development, if you like. And then if you imagine that part of your psyche gets stunted. So let's say your child at five years old is kind of in fight or flight mode, is in stress, uh, stress and survival mode, but you carry on into adulthood. You may have several different inner, chil child, inner children within you, versions of yourself, which stopped at certain ages and started again, and they haven't been quite healed, resolved, the conflict hasn't been, they haven't got out of survival mode, and you're carrying these aspects with you. Now, this is another fragmented part of your psyche, if you like, if you look at it from a gestalt viewpoint, um, or from a shadow part, you know, it gets relegated into the shadow. Okay, so that, the five-year-old me was scared, well, I put it back down to the, into the shadow, but of course, it's still there. That child is still there next to you, and there'll be a trigger in the present moment, which will send you straight into fight or flight and feeling like the five-year-old child again. So let's go through some of the common signs of the unhealed childhood trauma. Uh, difficulty trusting others, which may stem from a betrayal or inconsistent caregiving during childhood. Uh, so you have these uh, feelings of low self-worth, which are often due to critical or neglectful parents. There's also fear of abandonment or rejection, which results from early separation or emotional unav unavailability of a parent. And repeating unhealthy relationship patterns in adulthood. So you then start seeking out partners who replicate dysfunctional family dynamics that you experienced as a child. So if you were abused as a child, you may seek out someone unconsciously as abusive, uh, or neglectful or emotionally uh, unavailable because that's what you experienced in the early family dynamic. That's what you're used to, that's what's familiar and you see it in your adulthood and you're like, on an unconscious level, you connect to that because you know how to be, you know, that's familiar. You can, um, in other ways, you can overreact to minor criticisms or perceived uh, slights against the self which again reflects the deep-seated insecurity and maybe possibly unresolved hurt or wounds from when you were a child. Okay, so you could, for example, um, have been, you could have abandonment issues because uh, you were abandoned as a child, which leads to clinginess in adulthood, in adult relationships, and you may well end up recognizing this, and this becomes one of, uh, you know, it becomes a sign for you to begin to take the first step towards healing, like, okay, I'm always being clingy, clingy. this tends to destroy relationships. You know, this is another relationship which has been destroyed through this behavior of mine. I think it's now time to do something about it, to work with it, to recognize it. And it could be that, you know, earlier on in your life, one of your parents left somehow, Maybe, uh, I mean, the classic one is, you know, father leaving, sometimes it's the mum leaving, sometimes somebody dies, sometimes somebody's really ill, and there's this feeling as a child, this massive uh, whoa, abandonment falling into the void, and then you try to avoid that as, a uh, as an adult, and if you sense it coming, um, let's say somebody leaves you, you fall into, instead of just being the relationship kind of like a what would be called, I might say a normal reaction of loss and grief, okay, I'm upset about the relationship ending, it hasn't worked. You fall into this massive void of abandonment and rejection and all of this stuff hits you and you're absolutely on your knees because you're being hit with 
stuff from the past, which could be seen as a transference, but what it, what it also could be seen is this, this is the inner child, the wounded inner child coming forward within you and going, holy shit, we're, we're going through it again. This is, this is where I'm at, okay? This is one example. So another way this might affect the same example is you, you're clinging and you're fearing that this partner you have is always going to leave, is always going to leave because your dad did when you were younger or your mum did, or like I say, somebody died or somebody was ill or you were abandoned and you're trying to avoid feeling that again. And that is the inner child within you, which is relegated into the shadow, which is disconnected from you in some way, but walking beside you, if you want to kind of imagine it that way. And the moment something seems like it's about to happen, bam, that inner child comes forward. That wounded child comes forward and starts acting for you, as you, if that makes sense. That's, it's quite an abstract way of looking at it, but it's the best I got. There's several shadow work techniques which can help you address childhood trauma. One would be inner childhood dialogues, which, uh, and again, I would stress, big disclaimer here, some of the things I suggest are worth doing with a professional, so you don't re-traumatize yourself. Please think about this before you start it. But one way you can do it is uh, writing letters to and from your inner child, expressing your feelings and needs, and literally write to them. Um, it helps you give a voice to parts of yourself that may have been silenced or ignored. Um, and again, this is quite a popular shadow work technique to um, give a voice to aspects of shadow, those relegated parts of self. Give that inner child a voice. Give whatever other... I mean, I want to stick within a child, but you know, aspects of self which have been relegated to the shadow, give them an inner voice. Uh, sorry, give them an external voice. Give them that voice, which you could do through journaling, you could talk out loud. I do know some people who have gone as far in therapy as literally imagining their inner child in front of them, literally talking to them. I'm going to show you how to brush your teeth. I'm going to show you how to cross the road. I'm going to hold your hand. I've got you, I'm the adult. It's, there's a reparenting thing can go on. You can be the ideal parent to your inner child. It sounds crazy, but it does actually work, especially if you weren't shown that, if you were neglected, if you were abused. I'm, not, I'm going to protect you now. You don't need to protect me. You're the child, I'm the adult. I'm the adult version of you. And I'm strong and powerful. I'm going to protect you. You know, this is another way of doing it. And it's, it's very, very powerful stuff because it's very visceral. It's very physical. I know other people who keep like a totem, like um, say like a die or a, or a jack top or something like that or a marble and they're feeling anxiety and they're wanting to fight or flight. The inner child's coming forward and they just remind themselves, they put their hand in their pocket, they have some kind of, I mean it's a key, but you know, it's, it's some kind of totem. And you say, just to remind yourself, it's okay, I've got this. I'm the adult now. I am powerful now. I'm not five years old anymore. You still are. But I got you, I'm gonna parent you, I'm gonna guide us through this, you know, because I recognize I am powerful. This is really, really powerful stuff to do, it's really intense as well. Um, another way to do it is through guided imagery, which involves visualizing a safe place where you can meet your inner child and offer them uh, the love and reassurance that they need. It's like projecting your inner child out in front of yourself. So sometimes this is often done in gestalt style therapy where, with uh, empty chair technique. And again, disclaimer, if you're gonna do empty chair, do it with a therapist, do it with a professional who knows what they're doing because it can be very, very triggering and it can be very intense. It can be extremely healing as well. So you literally imagine your younger self sitting in front of you. You can pick them up, you can hug them, you can talk to them. You can tell them you've got them. You can fold them back into yourself. You know, it's a lot of that stuff goes on. And again, it's that talking to them, imagining them there. It's your younger version of you, which is still scared which still fears abandonment, which is still in fight or flight, which is running on stress mode, which is running on fear mode. And that is influencing your behaviors because it's, it's you, it's part, they are part of you. But at the same time, they're disconnected from you. So it's, it's about reconnecting and reintegrating with your inner child and reparenting them. I mean, you know, EMDR therapy kind of goes along this line, well, a lot of therapies do, but EMDR especially is like, kind of like, the brain's like a computer, it experience, we experience a traumatic event, we, to process and survive that traumatic event, we put the emotions and et cetera, et cetera, into a temporary folder. And then, but what happens is life moves forward. 
and we don't get to actually file the contents of that temporary folder properly. So what therapy does, or EMDR especially, is goes back to the temporary folder, if you like. I know this is quite an abstract metaphor. Empties and has a look through files. This needs filing away. Let's let's put that one away. This needs processing here. That needs processing there. This needs comfort there. This needs uh, expression here, and puts it all away properly. You know, it's just, this is trauma uh, recovery work, if you like. Journaling is another really, really good way. Writing about your childhood experiences, exploring your emotions. Journaling is great for anything like that. Going back over, not re-traumatizing yourself from the past, but going back with a different viewpoint, kind of dipping a toe into it, one foot in, one foot out, to help process difficult experiences, difficult situations, and get a different view. And again, always reminding yourself, I'm, I'm the adult now, I'm in a safe place, I'm powerful, uh, I'm working through this with a professional, whatever it may be, re that reminder that you are no longer that wounded, scared five-year-old, nine-year-old, 10-year-old, 13-year-old, whatever um, is going on, you are now the adult and you are helping, you are reparenting yourself effectively. Another way to do this is through art therapy. I don't know who said this, but I really, really like it as a, as a bit of a mantra or a phrase. The creative adult is an expression of the wounded child, and it's definitely for sure. And creativity, creative expression, art, sculpture, music, l poetry, l lyrics, uh, or whatever it may be, is a fantastic way to process unresolved emotions to process stuff from the past, to get it out to, and because what you have to remember is as children, we operate on, we're more image based. We're more image based, we're less cognitive based, that aspect of our brain's not really working properly at this point when we're children. We see things more abstract. And so, and what is the best way to access that and get back to that being a child, either through play, which I'll maybe mention in a minute, or through creativity, through creative expression. It really, really can help you access and process unresolved feelings, unresolved uh, traumas. You know, and if you want some examples, I mean like, you know, I don't know, Eminem, Kurt Cobain, Frida Kahlo. Uh, there's so many painters and artists and sculptures, sculptors, you know, the wounded poet, all of this stuff. You, they're writers putting your soul into something as an expression as a way of processing through difficult as times in your life is a fantastic and uh, a really, really effective way of healing, especially your inner child. There's another way of doing it, um, internal family systems, if you like, which emphasizes the importance of understanding and healing our internal family of selves, including the inner child. So again, you know, it's like you're having these inner children inside of us, inner version, younger versions of ourselves stuck within us, at, stuck at certain spots, at certain moments in our life where they stopped growing there at five years old, the six year old took over if you like, started to grow a bit, got traumatized again, got stuck at 13, you know, and it's kind of there like to the side of us or, or in the shadow in this case. Um, and like our internal family systems therapy sort of focuses on acknowledging and integrating these parts, leading to a greater self-awareness and emotional balance. Again, it's the same, thing, it's another turn of the kaleidoscope, it's the same thing Jung's saying, it's the same thing Gestalt says and all the rest of it, it's about integrating these parts back into yourselves, creating a greater level of homeostasis, create more self-regulation, more integration with the self rather than having fragmented aspects of yourself all over the place, stunted, stopped, traumatized, all kind of, you know, if you imagine your entire family of yourself, yourselves, walking along beside you, all reacting to current situations in different ways, which is often what can happen for people, and they become very ill and very traumatized and very stressed, and starting to heal these aspects, reparent, reintegrate these aspects of self uh, is extremely powerful and extremely uh, effective. And again, I'm gonna do the disclaimer thing again, often with a lot of this stuff, it's very powerful. I'm drawing a box, <laughs> use a professional someone who knows how to do this work, um, who has experience in doing this work, who has a, a, a professional training in this work, because it can be extremely potent and you can open the lid on Pandora's box. And if, the, if you're doing it by yourself, you may well not be able to close the lid. And if you're doing it with a professional who doesn't know what they're doing, they may not be able to help you 
close the lid. And I always say to my clients when we start this kind of work, you know, you have to commit to the work. If you're going to go this deep within self and you're going to go this deep within your healing and you're going to open that lid on this box, you have to see it through to the end to be able to close it. And if you can't see it through to the end, don't run away from the therapy. Stay, close the lid temporarily, go, it's okay, I'm gonna close it for now, I can't do any more for now, I'm gonna close it, carry on with my life for a bit, and when I'm ready to reopen it and look at the next bit, I'm gonna do that. You know, I, I can't emphasize this strongly enough. If you're gonna do this work, commit to it. And if you're going to pause, commit to the pause and closing it so you can function in life. And then moving on from that slightly would be reparenting your inner child as I've sort of discussed already. You are the adult of your younger self. Your parents may well have been shit and neglectful and emotionally unavailable or abusive or devaluing. Well, now you know how not to be. So now you can be how you want to be towards your younger self and including to yourself. And it's like a two-way street. You will begin to heal. So these include self-soothing techniques, affirmations, uh, setting healthy boundaries for yourself within relationships and within your own behaviors. These can be boundaries for yourself, could be critical thoughts, self-critical thoughts, counter them with affirmations, disregard the critical voice, realize where that comes from, check out the video I did on silencing the inner critic. Use affirmations that, uh, I mean, I'm trying not to be fluffy, but you know, be kind to yourself, support your inner child, treat yourself when you're in those modes, when you're acting, when you're being wounded, when you're being triggered, treat yourself with compassion, just as you would with a child, you know? Just as you would want to be, have been treated. And so reparent yourself and nurture your inner child. So self-soothing is like engaging in activities that provide comfort and relaxation, such as meditation, nature, walks, creative hobbies, practicing, like I said, uh, um, did I say? No, uh, well, I said meditation, but mindfulness as well to create a sense of inner calm. So there's a lot of breath work, affirmations, positive affirmations to reinforce your self-worth. Look how far you've come. Look at what you've achieved. Look at how strong and powerful you are as an adult. That you are able to parent yourself. Counter some of that negative self-talk. Thanks for your advice, critical self, but it's not needed right at this moment. It's irrelevant. Um, I am worthy of love or respect. I did manage to achieve this off my own volition. Um, and my feelings and my needs are valid. That kind of stuff, if you need to, maybe design yourself as a mantra. Establish and maintain healthy boundaries in relationships. Uh, I've done one with yourself with a critical voice. Now this is in relationships. Protect your well-being and respect your needs. If someone devalues you constantly, work, work, work away from it. Work, work away from it. Walk away from that relationship. Learn to say no. Learn to prioritize your own emotional health, for sure, and your physical health. Don't stretch yourself too thin. Um, it's okay to say no because you need downtime, you need relaxed time, you need self-soothing time, you need your hobbies, you need to switch off. It's perfectly okay, learn to do it. And what you'll find over time with these techniques, and like I said, probably most likely would be a good idea with a professional, you'll um, improve your self-awareness, your emotional regulation, you'll have healthier relationships, and by healing your childhood wounds, you can't stop, you can't change the fact that it happened, but you can heal the wound, you can change the outcome to a point. Uh, well, no, actually, you can change the outcome. You, it's, it's never too late. And you can break free from patterns of your behavior or maybe patterns in relationships which no longer serve you and create yourself a more fulfilling life. It, that is a really, I wouldn't say brief overview, but that is an overview. There's a lot more depth to it. There's a lot more breadth to it. But I think for the purposes of this video, it's, it's sufficient enough. Maybe I'll take it into details in other, in subsequent videos. And as always, until I see you again, please take very good care of yourselves. Adios.